Welcome to the Millennial Way Show podcast, episode number 52. Time Magazine has described our next guest as one of the top 100 heroes and icons of the century. With more than 86 books, translated to more than 43 languages, and 26 books on the New York Times bestsellers rank, it's a pleasure to present you Dr. Deepak Chopra. He is a world-renowned pioneer in uh, integrative medicine and personal transformation, founder of the Chopra Foundation, co-founder of Jigo.com and Chopra Global. We wanted to invite him to our show to talk about his latest book, MetaHuman, Unleashing Your Infinite Potential. He accepted our call while he was in Houston, Texas. This is the interview. Hello, Dr. Chopra. Hi, Ismael. How are you? Good, good, Dr. Chopra. Thank you very much. A pleasure to, to hear you again. Well, it's wonderful to speak to you. How are you? Good. Thank you very much, Dr. Chopra. Um, uh, we're going to start the interview uh, right now, if you don't mind, okay? Yes, please do. Excellent. Um, Dr. Chopra, thank you very much for this interview for the Millennial Way Show. You're more than welcome. Thank you for having me. Before we talk about MetaHuman, your latest book, I just realized that um, actually the address of your hotel where you are right now in Houston, Texas, the number is 1919. And the suite of our recording studio for today in Miami, Florida, is also 1919. Is this just a pure Very good. and simple coincidence? I guess that synchronicity. It's a good sign. Synchronicity is a good sign. Hmm. I wanted to mention the coincidence of the situation. Because if you realize, he was in a 1919 address in Houston, Texas. And we were at the same address, 1919, but in Miami, Florida. Dr. Chopra have uh, written several books about how to harness the infinite power of coincidence. One of them is uh, called The Spontaneous Fulfillment of Desire. And another one is called uh, Synchro Destiny, harnessing the infinite power of coincidence to create miracles. But let's go back to our conversation with Deepak Chopra. But in simple words, doctor, um, how we can achieve this uh, metahuman? You have to realize that the human mind, the everyday human mind is, uh, a social mind. It's what we call the hypnosis of social conditioning. And therefore, most people, their mind usually, unfortunately, is the recycling of the collective social mind. And um, you can see what the collective social mind is, what we call media, what we call education, what we call entertainment, what we call social networks, uh, or even the news, and all that is good in a sense that culture informs us about what is happening in the world. But at the same time, if you look at what is happening in the world, you see war, terrorism, eco-destruction, extinction of species, mechanized instruments of death, nuclear weapons biological warfare, uh, internet hacking, and uh, hacking of democracy and freedom. So if we agree that our collective social mind has created this nightmare, then we have to go beyond our collective mind and what is the source of the original mind. And you find that in any child. Every child is full of wonder full of curiosity, full of love, full of empathy, full of compassion, full of adventure, full of a desire for truth, goodness, beauty, harmony, love, compassion, joy, empathy, and playfulness. If we restore that original uh, experience, which all of us were born with, then we wake up 
the inner genius in every human being. Because in every human being there is a genius, there is an intelligence. It mirrors the wisdom of the whole universe and the cosmos. But it gets overshadowed by uh, what we call ego constructs. If we can go beyond that, then that is meta-human. Meta means beyond, and human means, in this case, the constricted, fearful, lonely, alienated, separate, fragmented social mind. Even though we call it social mind, it actually isolates us. Perfect. You said in your book, Dr. Chopra, that to be awake is to embrace full self-awareness. How we can embrace full self-awareness? Can you give us like uh, simple examples? Yes, uh, the awareness of a thought is not a thought. So that means awareness is independent of thought. It's the source of thought, but it is independent of thought. Similarly, the awareness of your body is not the body. It is independent of the body. So too, the awareness of any perception, any experience, is not the experience. It is that in which the experience is occurring. So it is independent. Being independent, it is fully creative and full of insight, intuition, imagination, vision, and expanded possibilities, actually infinite possibilities. For every story you heard, there are infinite more stories to both hear and tell. For every thought you've had, there are infinite thoughts that you have access to. For every answer you've received, there are infinite answers you have access to. So your fundamental reality is infinite creativity and infinite uh, possibilities and uh, uh, self-evolution. And ultimately, uh, both self-regulation and what we call homeostasis and healing. In order to access this, you have to go and you have to practice techniques that help you go beyond the mind, such as meditation, such as mindful awareness of perception, sound, touch, sight, taste, smell, awareness of the body, awareness of uh, what's happening inside the body, awareness of mental space, awareness of the web of relationships, and ultimately pure awareness or pure consciousness that comes from being aware of being aware. So I will be teaching some of these techniques on my visit to Miami soon. Let's talk about your visit to Miami because we have a, a, a big audience here that they're expecting you. <laughs> they're waiting for you to come here pretty soon. Uh, this event is going to happen the 1st of November. Uh, what your followers can uh, expect for this lecture in Miami? Well, I will be speaking for one and a half hours, 90 minutes. I'll be going over all the principles of MetaHuman, and then I will conclude with the meditation so people can get the experience directly. That's amazing. I understand, um, Dr. Chopra, that also you're going to be having a, a, a special event from, uh, I think it's November 14th to November 17th in Arkansas. Stages uh, plus yes. symposium. So, what can you tell us about November 14th to November 17th, the foundation, our Chopra Foundation, which is a 501c3 nonprofit, it will be conducting a three day conference called Sages and Sciences. The first day is about the future of well being, the second day is about the future of humanity. And the third day is about the future of the cosmos, of the universe. And we will be bringing together scientists, humanitarians, neuroscientists, cosmologists, and people in the healing fields, all experts from all over the world. And the conference is in Bentonville, Arkansas, at the Crystal Bridges Museum, which is the finest museum of American art in the world, and uh, yeah, people can find out more about it by going to sagesandscientists.org. Amazing, amazing. Uh, back to your book, Dr. Chopra. Uh, you tackle very hard the concept of meta-reality for our audience, for our listeners. Um, uh, which are the secrets of meta-reality, if you can tell us a few? 
Well, meta-reality is uh, the reality that constructs our everyday reality. Our everyday reality, though, is a constricted, localized reality in space and time. Meta-reality is uh, beyond space and time. It is the realm of what we call universal consciousness, non-local reality, from where every species, every living species, derives its own finite experiences. So as human beings, we have a certain range of perceptual activity which is different from other species, from birds, from bees, from other animals. But all these different experiences, which are species-specific, like the human experience is species-specific, it has a source in meta-reality. And meta-reality is therefore the reality that constructs all different dimensions of reality. Today, many scientists and things, string theorists and physicists are saying that there are multiple universes and there are multiple dimensions of space and time. And so what I'm talking about is a reality that is beyond space, time, and causality, beyond the human body, beyond the human mind, and the window to that reality is our own soul. So that means uh, so, so that's the nature of the of reality, or what the nature of reality will be the question? The nature of ultimate reality is that it is non-material. It is not in space or time. It is prior to information, energy, and matter. And it is the source of all experience in all, all species, and therefore the source of all perceptual experiences of reality. Meta-reality precedes every experience. In Chapter 12, Dr. Chopra, you mentioned that pain and suffering are not essential, that they are part of the drama we've constructed. How does someone transcend that suffering, especially if they are sick or experiencing a challenging period in their life? All uh, living species experience pain and even suffering when they are uh, given, uh, when they are treated, mistreated, or they are physically injured. But humans being suffer because of their fears of old age, infirmity, death. They suffer because they confuse their ego with their true self. They suffer because they are afraid of impermanence. They suffer because of ego identity. And they suffer because, as I said, as human species and people who have imagination, like other an an animals don't, in the way we have imagination, and our storytelling, we inflict on ourselves what is called in existential suffering. Existential suffering is the reason for philosophy and religion and spiritual seeking and even a scientific understanding of the source of our existence. So this book uh, addresses what we call existential suffering and how to go beyond it. At the end of the book, there are 31 exercises that one can do over 31 days. That's amazing. You just mentioned ego, and you talk also about three different types of self, the ego personality, the unconscious self, and the true self. Can you please describe very quickly each one of them, and how can individuals make the leap towards their true self? Yeah, well, our everyday reality is a projection of our ego personality, and therefore is our conscious mind. The unconscious mind can be accessed through hypnosis, uh, through dreams, through sleep, but beyond all this is what we call non local reality, the source of every experience and the source of every knowing, whether it is mental or perceptual. And this is what the wisdom traditions have done throughout centuries through methods like reflective self-inquiry, mindful awareness, meditation, transcendence, self-actualization, and ultimately Dr. Chopra, you argue that our lives are shaped by stories invented by human imagination. As a result, becoming metahuman is impossible without questioning your own story. 
what are some few practical ways we can be in dismantled, defabricated reality many of us live in? Yeah, the, our own story is a result of uh, a social indoctrination and human constructs. And one of the best ways to start is to question your own story and say, is there only one version or are there several versions of the story? And you'll see that every story, there are infinite versions. More important, it is, us, it is important to go very quiet in the mind and ask questions like, who am I? What do I want? What's my purpose? And what am I grateful for? With that kind of self-reflection and stillness starts the journey to meta-human. Very quickly, choiceless awareness. How can a person achieve this state of consciousness when we are constantly bombarded with decisions we need to make and endless options? Choiceless awareness means being aware of the choices as you make them and allowing spontaneity, no resistance, no anticipation, no regrets. The present moment is alive with infinite possibilities. So Krishnamurti, the great Indian philosopher, said choiceless awareness is the ability to observe yourself without judging yourself. I start my day every day by committing to non-judgment of myself and others. Last question, Dr. Chopra, and we really appreciate your time. Which will be sure. your best advice to the new generations to become the best version of themselves and live a happy and fulfilled life? But you have to know what you want. You have to have the ability to still yourself. You have to be non-judgmental, and you have to cultivate what we call divine emotions, like love, compassion, joy, equanimity, and then that is the best way to start. Dr. Chopra, we really, really appreciate your time, and uh, we hope to see you pretty soon here in Miami, Florida. It was a pleasure. I'm to have really you looking forward to my visit to Miami. Thank you so much. Well, this is the, the end of our interview on this uh, episode 52 of the Millennial Way Show podcast with our guest, Dr. Deepak Chopra. Really hope you like this uh, interview. We hope you enjoy our guest. And uh, please let us know what you think. You can uh, write us or send uh, all your messages through all our social media platforms. Remember that we are in uh, Instagram as uh, Millennial Way SH. Or also we are in Twitter, in Facebook, in YouTube, and also in SoundCloud. My name is Ismael Trevino, and this is the Millennial Way Show, empowering the new generation.